Okay, we're ready to uh, varnish the piece. And first off, normally I go down to Walmart and I buy these cheap brushes, your uh, bristle brushes, and you can get them over there in the paint section. I think they're about a buck a piece. I get about six or seven of them at a time. No, I don't get seven of them, I'd be unlucky. I get six or eight of them at a time. I don't believe in odd numbers. But I made a big mistake. For some reason, there is a shoe polish shortage. We've looked in Walmart all over the place at other stores for brown shoe polish. And we can't find it anywhere. So guess what I'm polishing my shoes with right now? I'll show you. Brie wax. This is light brown, and uh, I know it's furniture polish, but my shoes, you know, I'll show you my shoes. See, they look pretty slick, don't they? That's better than they look earlier today, man. They look, they look terrible. It was, <coughs> there was nothing. I was embarrassed to walk around in them. But anyway, that's what's on this brush is, is that furniture polish. So I'm using it until I can find some regular shoe polish. Anyway. <coughs> Well, what am I talking about now? So anyway, brushes. I went through <laughs> my brushes down underneath the, in my brush drawer down there, painting drawer, and found this one, so I'm going to use it. But this is a good brush. This, cost, this, this brush cost me some money. I, I really don't like to use it except for real <coughs> special stuff. But those little, uh, these little brushes work just as fine. I just sit there and rub them around a few times to get any loose hairs out, and then put on the varnish and they work great. <clears throat> so anyway, this is what I want to use. This is a Minwax Polyurethane Clear Satin. Okay? And let me tell you something. When you buy this, here I've already loosened up the lid. When you buy this, the varnish is almost clear. And over time, it turns to an, an amber color. Now this turn into amber doesn't bother me at all when I put it on my piece. Actually, it gives it an even warmer look, which is fine by me. That's what I'm looking for. But I tell people, don't ever go down and buy a quart of this stuff if you're just going to paint a little thing every once in a while, because you'll end up throwing half of it away. Because eventually this will turn so dark that I'm not even going to use it. It's getting close to that right now, but I can still go, and do, go ahead and do this figure. All right? On my base, I used a dark walnut varnish, and then I sprayed it with uh, hang on here. the semi-gloss clear. Works real good. One coat. After I sanded it good, it makes it look really good. And then when this goes on here, you don't want this too shiny. But one thing I won't do, you'll never see me paint a figure with spray paint. Because when you're varnishing, and you use spray paint, this is how it hits your carving. Bang, 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 bang. Well, that's great if it's flat, like these surfaces. But this is far from being flat. So by spraying it, you're going to get a lot of spray right at the tip of his nose, but not near as much, if any, back here at the back of his nose. So the best thing to do is brush it. That way you can get the whole thing up in the tight spots up in there like that. Granted, I have lots of flat areas up here, but I still brush it on. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do right now. I've taken off my little feather. I've got my holding uh, thing back in here. And I've got my holder in here. 
And this split on me here, because I was a fool and didn't drill a hole before I put the screw on there. Judy, don't zoom into that. I don't want them to see my mistakes. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is varnish his uh, head and hat. And one thing you'll notice as I'm varnishing, how much richer the colors are. And also another thing you'll notice is how the surface of this really soaks up the varnish, especially the end grain, you know, where the pores of the end grain of the wood pull this varnish down into it. But again, if I was trying to spray this, I could never, never get an even coat on it with a spray can. So, take my advice. Don't try to do that. After you've spent so much time making your carving, you owe it to that carving to give it the be best, excuse me, the best finish possible. And that's what I'm doing right now. Because years from now, this finish will look as good as the day you put it on. Because I've got carvings up at the house that I did, oh shoot, 50 years ago. And they look just as good as this one will look tomorrow after the varnish dries. And that cigarette there. Now see, here's the, the grain's running this way on this thing. So see, you got shiny spot there and a shiny spot here. Watch up here on this area up here when I put it on there. It just soaks it right up. See there? It's just going in there. And when that goes into the wood, this stuff goes into that wood, it's going to strengthen it. It just becomes like glue. It was hot today. We were coming back from town just a minute ago. Had to go down to McDonald's and get uh, our daily mocha frappe. And man, it was hot. So I turned on the air conditioner in here and I got the fan running over there because I want it cool enough in here to where it doesn't dry this varnish before I get a chance to get it all on here and even it out. See, look how much deeper these colors are since I've finished. Okay, got that done. Brush that out. Brush that out. I'm going to stop right now for just a second. Okay, I went and got me a paper towel. Don't try to, uh, I'm going to wipe the excess varnish off. Whatever you do, don't use a cloth. Don't use toilet paper. Use a paper towel. And you won't leave a, leave a bunch of fiber behind on it. And just slightly wipe off those real shiny areas that didn't accept the, the amount of stain that it did on the end grain. This will give you a nice even finish on your uh, on your carving. Same thing on his face here on these high po high spots. See, like his lip there, where it's shiny. You want to get those wiped down.
We don't want any large amount of varnish on there if you can help it. Most of the varnish is soaked in. You watch it. You watch it disappear as I put it on there. Don't rub, don't rub too hard. You just want to block this stuff off of there. Get that all done. Just lay that aside. Just something here to just set that there to dry. I'm going to do this. Like I say, you know, you spend a lot of time making these things. The least you can do is do that final step and make them make them appear the best that they can. When people buy my carvings, you know, we go to a show or something like that. And they'll be looking at my carvings. And every person that stops by the by our table, you know, I look at that as a prospective collector. And if they stand there just a little bit, I know that, you know, they're, they're probably trying to make a decision or something. So I'll get up and I'll walk out there to them. And I, I see that they're interested and looking at one carving there, you know, I can tell if they're, if they're looking. I'll go out and I'll pick that carving up and I'll hand it to them. And I'll say, here, go ahead, take it. It's not fragile. It's strong. So, you want a good hard finish on something that's going to last a long time. Now you'll see on this you see how it's all shiny because there's a lot of grain that's out like this so this this won't soak in like it does up here on top see it's already soaking in around that area there you won't get all the shiny spots but I'll show you later on how to take care of those so, there we go. Make sure everything's painted that's going to get painted. Get my paper towel here. Make sure you don't lay it down on the dirty, on the dirty table. Turn it to where you've got a surface that's clean. And then, again, wipe off the excess varnish. This is semi semi-gloss, so it's going to have a little soft sheen to it when it shine dries, but uh, if it's too shiny, we'll fix that later on. It's still warm in here. I can feel this. It's already setting up. It was hot here today. Oh, it was hot. Yeah, it's supposed to even be hotter come Saturday. The poor Irish, the poor Irish people that are here visiting. <laughs> I can just imagine how they feel. We all went out for breakfast this morning. 
the young girls become infatuated with biscuits and gravy. Oh, she loves biscuits and gravy. I told her, I always get half a bowl of gravy instead of get a whole bowl because I like to mix coffee in with my gravy because the gravy's always thick. And mixing a little coffee in there gives it a little bit tastier product and it thins it out so, so you're not eating wallpaper paste. But boy, she loved that biscuit and gravy. Okay. So, get me another folder here. Wiping it off like that also will prevent any runs, which you don't want. Okay, keep everything together. I glued his uh, cigarette in. Just a drop of super, super glue. Sorry, I'm still belching for having a crap. You see those colors? They really darkened up. It's a little shine on his nose. But in the next video, last video, I thought we'd wrap it up this time, but no, we didn't get a chance to. I can't see you doing anything. Well, just shine this pot. <laughs> what was I going to say? Anyway, in the next video, we'll mount it onto its base. We'll do a little technique on his eyes there. And we'll be done with it. I went ahead and did the beading on his hat because. Uh, it's just some things you can't cover the whole thing. I try to cover as much as I can. So the next time I use this, I'll probably open it up and say, oh, that's too dark. And it'll go into the trash over there. I'll go wash this in uh, mineral spirits. And tomorrow I'll come down and we'll finish this thing, guaranteed. As there'll be some time passing and then uh, it, that's going to be on this video too, okay? I mean the end product is going to be on this video too. Okay, so until tomorrow morning, I'll talk to you later. Alright, it's the next morning. Time has passed. Just looking over my carving here. The face looks good. The colors are, you know, the varnish has dried fairly flat because most of it is soaked into the wood. Underneath, there's hardly any sheen. There's a couple, couple spots here. Nothing really to worry about. So that turned out pretty good. So I'm just going to leave that the way it is. Now the uh, negative is kind of shiny, so what we're going to do is we're going to dull it down. Now to do that, I use this tester's dull coat, it's called. Let's see if I can find the word on there. I get it down to Hobby Lobby. It costs $5.79. Probably costs more than that now. I'm sure the, the price has gone up. But anyway, it's called dull coat. D-U-L-C-O-A-T. What it is, it's uh, things uh, uh, modelers use to dull the finish of uh, their kits, you know, the tanks and planes and stuff that they build to keep, keep it from being shiny. Okay, so with this dull coat, now, one thing you can keep in mind, this is a lacquer. What we put on here is a mineral spirit based uh, polyurethane bar varnish. So lacquer and mineral spirits mixed together 
in quantity don't mix very well. If you spray too much of this on here, sometimes uh, it will flash and uh, you'll get a, just a white coating all over the place. Well, you certainly don't want that. So what I do is uh, start down here on the bottom because it's the shiniest. Shake this up good. Just lightly put on a coat on there like that. And I'm using the hair dryer. You can see that that dulled that quite a bit, and that's just about what you want right there. So I'm going to do it fast like this. It dries that stuff out before it has a chance to really mix in with the. So that looks pretty good now. I'm just checking this again. This does have some spots. What I'm going to do is just lightly go over this. Kind of even out the areas. Right up in here where the grain is like this. Didn't have a chance to soak in like it did in here, but so let's just take care of that. Okay, so that takes care of that. So now we'll move over to the table over here. Well, maybe I'll just do it here. Get that out of the way. Okay, using this five minute uh, epoxy. You can get this down at Lowe's or Home Depot. Get your toothpick and something to put it on. Mix that together. Now you've got, they say five minutes, but you still have to work pretty fast because uh, five minutes passes pretty quickly. And by the time you get this mixed up good, that's probably going to be about a minute. So then that drops it to four minutes. And then by the time you put it where you want it on your pieces, there goes another minute, there goes three minutes. So, you want to uh, get it on there as fast as you can. Now I've drilled a couple holes here in my base. I've kind of pooled them out here at the top so they'll catch drips and stuff, not that I'm worried about that. On the back of my carving here, I have uh, my posts already glued in place. So what I want to do here, get some glue on my piece here. Force that down in there. Just like that. put these in here that's going to force that glue up around those pieces and hold them in place like that. 
just like that. Got me a rubber band here. Put that on there, get that up there where those panels were. Just lay that down well. No, I can't do that. If the glue runs out, it's going to just run out right down behind here, but I don't think any glue ran out. So now, with my glue, I'm going to take it, rub it around inside here. Should have just about enough to do this job. I don't want any glue to come up out of the socket there. Put some on that. It's that unfortunate mistake of mine. Don't tell anybody. And then I'm going to set him down in there. I always like to uh, pose my figures to where they're not looking straight ahead like that. I like them to look off to the side, give them a little mystery. What's he looking at over there? Let me take his hat back just a little. Now that glue's already setting up, so we just had to just enough time to get it done. Now we'll wait till that sets up and then we'll do one more thing. Oh, we got the, we have the uh, feather. Excuse me, got the feather. See if we can't take care of that. I think we might be able to have enough glue to get that in place. If we work fast enough. to hold that in there. Get that tag off of it. Got a hole right there. Get that right there. Hold it up there just a minute. Don't want it tipped too far forward. About like that. And that glue will set up enough to where that'll hold that in place. It's just about there. So we'll now wait just a little bit till that glue sets up so Judy can go ahead and shut the camera off. Okay, I'm squeezing out just a couple little drops of glue here. Got me another toothpick. Use the smallest end. They're about the same, but actually that one looks a little smaller. You want the smallest end for this job. Blend these together real well. We're going to bring him alive here. So with your toothpick, go down in there and on the end of it, get you a little bitty drop. So you can see that drop right there? 
That's exactly what you want in this case. And being careful not to top, touch the upper or the lower eyelid. See that spot? See that highlight? Let me get just a little bit more. That's a big. I always want to let that settle. There. See the white spot in the middle of the eye? Now people will paint black and then they'll put that spot on there. But watch that spot. See it move? Now I picked up another highlight. Go this way. It just follows right along. That's what a real eye does. And when you do this to your carvings, it just brings the piece alive. Again, being real careful not to touch the upper or lower eyelid because if you touch it one of them it's going to pull the epoxy away from the center and you don't want that and always wait till that last drop string from this goes down to the other now let's set him up here through the shadow I can see him. But it just brought him to life. It's just, it's just a technique that I personally think is so much better than painting baby doll eyes on your carvings. When you reduce a figure down to this size, the detail of the color of the pupil, iris, I guess, is lost. It just won't show it. It just looks like a black spot from a distance. I'm looking at Judy. She wears glasses. All I see is a black, dark, circular spot back behind there. So, he's done. One more project complete. I hope you enjoyed following along with this. And uh, we'll see what comes up next. I've got a chuck wagon cook sitting over on my workbench. I haven't decided whether to, to do a video of painting it. It'd be pretty involved. Let me get him over here. This is his base here. Judy needs to, well here, I'll turn him around. I've got his pot of beans made. Got his coffee, coffee pot done. He looks pretty slick. Got a nice grin on his face. A lot of paint on here. Not so much on that one, but there's going to be a lot on here. So, uh, if you think I should do this, do a video series on this one, let me know in the comments section beneath the uh, post on my website, not on YouTube. I'd appreciate it if you go to my website and look for the blog page to see the video and to read what I write there rather than go directly to the YouTube video. That way I can t tell how many people are looking through my website to my carvings about finding out about my carvings. I'd just appreciate that if you would please. So. This one here is ready to go. He's going to go over to the gallery and uh, 
one of these days I'm going to get back to selling carvings again. I just hadn't reached that point yet. So, until next time, I'll talk to you later.